Oi! Welcome to Trade Ideas. I'm Jake Merle, sitting down with Sean Hackett, president of Hackett Financial Advisors. Sean, great to have you back on the show. It's always good to be here. So let's get right into it. What are we talking about today? We're talking about a very unusual uh, situation that only comes around maybe every 20 or 30 years, and that's a frost risk potential to the U.S. grain crop. In order to have a frost risk, you have to have a late developing crop. That usually means a late planted crop. This year was the slowest planting season we've had in history. And because of that, of the tremendous flooding, the tremendous rains that went all the way into June, we, we planted a record amount of soybean and corn acres in mid to late June than ever before. As such, our current development is in the top five slowest on record. Because of that, we are going to need a longer end to the growing season to finish the crop out, to have the crop mature so that it can yield its full potential. If that does not happen and you junt it or stop it from finishing out, there's all kinds of yield, quality, and disease problems that can emanate. So this year, because of that alone, we are in a very unusual situation where that is possible this year. And what would make that possible? What are the catalysts for that? Whenever we look at weather, we try to look at historical context, correlations. So there's some big picture features that have historically met earlier frost dates than not. One is, where are we in the solar cycle? There's an 11-year solar cycle. We go from high sunspots to low sunspots. At the trough periods have tended to be greater correlations to earlier frost dates in the Midwest. We are in a trough period. We also happen to be what's called a grand solar cycle minimum, where we have an overall longer period of lower sunspots, which tends to amplify normal behavior. That will also help it. Also, we're seeing a significant weakening El Nino. In fact, it's actually acting more La Nina-like. Whenever that happens, that also increases the odds of a colder weather pattern in the Midwest. And finally, we're looking at, we look at something called the 18.6 year lunar cycle. And that's essentially when the moon oscillates between 18 degrees off of the equator to 28 degrees, and that difference changes the forces on the ocean and makes the oceans move in different ways, and it impacts the weather quite significantly. And there's a very high correlation where we are now when we're at this part of the 18.6 year lunar cycle for increased early frost risks. So from a big picture perspective, we have a lot of reasons to think that the odds are higher this year than not, that we're not going to have a long end to the season, that we're gonna have a short end to it and a potential early frost date. So it seems like a perfect storm all coming together at the same point in time. It seems like a pretty rare event. Well, right, I mean, not only do you have to have a late developing crop, but you also have to be at the right time for, this, for, for all these other factors that come into play. So when we now say, okay, here we are, late developing crop, we have these bigger factors that are in play, but how do we monitor and micromanage it on a day-to-day, week-to-week level to see if we're getting something coming up. There's three weather phenomena that we focus on. One's called the Eastern Pacific Oscillation, one is called the Arctic Oscillation, and the other one's called the Western Pacific Oscillation. It's differences in the atmospheric pressures over the Northeast, the Arctic, and how they rotate air currents. And when they're in what's called a negative phase, um, they tend to push Arctic air, Canadian air, into the Midwest. So what we're looking for, uh, any one of these could do it, any two of these could do it, any three of these could do it. So meaning the more that are in our favor, the better. So what we're looking for is when will these three oscillation indicators be all negative simultaneously? It'll give us our best shot at an early frost date. Right now, from the latest weather models that we follow, we're looking at a mid-late September as a higher risk point where all these oscillations are going to be in their negative phase, um, pushing this cool air into the Midwest. It doesn't mean it guarantees it, but it says that we should really be on the lookout for some unusually cold intrusions of air into the Midwest where the crop is way behind. So based on everything you've laid out, would you be expecting you know, higher crop prices, whether it's corn, soybeans, or what specifically are you looking at? If we get a, a significant frost that comes in and stops the crop from finishing out, then we're going to have to start moving our crop production numbers down significantly. Yield down, harvested acres down, and obviously our overall supply is down and the market will have to react very violently. Remember what happened at the beginning of the spring and summer when we had this delayed planting, prices for corn, for example, went from 340 up to 480 in a matter of three or four weeks because the market was pricing in a lower crop. We would have to do the same thing all over again, but for a different reason. So how do you suggest traders and investors play the current situation? We think sometimes simple is the best 
modus operandi here. Sometimes complication gets in the way. We think a very easy, simple way to do it is simply to own a grain ETN, as they call it, exchange traded note. And in this case, our preferred one would be GRU. Um, and, and we think that that just owns corn, soybeans, and wheat, and, and you'd be able to participate in the entire move in the grain complex, not have to try to pick one over the other or something, like that, or try to do futures or options and get the timing wrong. We just think, you just want to own this into the end of the year. We think there's a good chance that you could get a, you know, a 30 or 50% move in grain prices if this frost uh, scenario were to play out at all. And just in case things don't go your way and it doesn't play out, would you have a stop loss on the downside? I would say it'd be more of a timing issue. If we get to mid-October and we haven't seen a frost, then it's off the table. So we would view it as a timing factor. If we haven't seen the markets rally, if we haven't seen this frost scenario play out, we would kind of take the trade off by mid-October if we haven't seen it start to play out. Right, if there's no catalyst, Correct. there's no trade. Because really, the, really, an early frost date means between September 15th and October 15th. If it happens afterwards, it would be a minimal impact. So we view that as a demarcation line in the sand for this trade. So Sean, there's been a lot of news that, you know, there's been high temperatures specifically in the Arctic and, you know, there's ice melting and, you know, there's climate change, global warming. How does that affect your thesis? It actually enhances the thesis. In years where there's low sea ice during the summertime, enhances cold air intrusions into the Midwest. And the reason is basically this. When you have low sea ice levels, the, sea sur this, the ocean in the Arctic absorbs more of the sun's energy. And so as we start going into the cooler phase of September and October, the Eastern Arctic freezes very quickly, but the Western Arctic stays warm. And it develops this high pressure system over the warm region that spins around and actually helps funnel even more cold air down into the Midwest. So what may seem like something that could actually make a warmer trend it actually does the exact opposite throughout history. It actually enhances the cold air intrusions by the nature of how it impacts the airflow. So in this particular instance, the last time we had this was in 2012 when we had low sea ice and we had very, very early frost dates that year. But of course the crop wasn't delayed, so we had no problem. Well, Sean, we'll see how it turns out in the months to come. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. So Sean is getting worried about a frost risk for crops. Specifically, he thinks the grain index, ticker symbol GRU, could rise 50% over the next four months. That was Sean Hackett of Hackett Financial Advisors. And for Real Vision, I'm Jake Merle.